The previous video showed the setup for debugging inside Chrome from within WebStorm. In this video, we look more in depth at JavaScript debugging. As we saw, we can quickly create and start a run debug configuration. Use right click and choose debug. In HTML files, this creates and selects a JavaScript run debug configuration, which is a JavaScript debug configuration type. It is pointed to a URL at our projects index.html page. The configuration uses Chrome as a browser and connects to the Chrome extension when debugging. JavaScript files can be debugged under the Node.js debugger instead of Chrome in a similar way. Right-click in a JavaScript file instead of an HTML file and choose Debug to start debugging. This creates a new Run Debug configuration. If we edit the new configuration, we see it is of type Node.js. Debugging in both Chrome and Node.js have similar features. We'll use Chrome first, then finish with Node.js. We commonly log to the console when debugging. This JavaScript file is included in our HTML and has a console.log line. When debugging, WebStorm reroutes these log statements from the Chrome console to its console. Breakpoints let you say stop execution on this line. In WebStorm, adding a breakpoint is easy. Just click in the gutter beside the line and a red circle will appear. Clicking it again removes the breakpoint. Changing breakpoints does not require browser reload. We can stop at the breakpoint by triggering an action that uses this code. Clicking the Resume button continues execution past the breakpoint. If our debugger window is hidden, WebStorm stops on the breakpoint when it is triggered, then opens the debugger window. When we stop at a breakpoint, we can inspect the state of the program at that point. The variables, and values in the local scope and other scopes. We also see the frames which show each layer the program went through to get to this line. As we jump between frames, the variables show the value of that point of execution. If you close a file, then later reopen it, the breakpoint is still there, even if you close WebStorm completely. This also means it's easy to lose track of breakpoints in big projects. WebStorm makes it simple to see and adjust all of them. Like many actions in WebStorm, View Breakpoints and other buttons have keyboard shortcuts. Perhaps you simply want the debugger to spring up when you hit a problem. View Breakpoints lets you set this kind of breakpoint to handle JavaScript exceptions in your code. When execution hits the exception, WebStorm stops on the line with the problem. It might be cumbersome to always stop at a breakpoint, repeatedly clicking Resume until some condition is met. Instead, we can add a breakpoint, then right-click to add a condition for when the breakpoint is applied. The next time we execute, the line is passed over until the condition is met. After stopping, you next want to carefully walk through the lines. WebStorm's debugger has many ways to step through your code. First, step over goes to the next line after the breakpoint, even if the breakpoint line calls a function. But if you are stopped on a line that calls a function and you want to debug into that function, then use step into to move the debugger into that function. You can then step over the lines in that function. When you are finished in that called function, click Step Out to speed through the rest of the function and go back to the start. Stepping over code can be laborious if you have lots of lines to go through. Instead, move your cursor to your target, then click the Run to Cursor button to step all the way to that line. Stopping at a breakpoint lets you use the Variables pane to inspect the scope. What if you'd like more power? You can also, when stopped at a breakpoint, use the console. Its prompt is in the context of the breakpoint and its local variables. Or use Evaluate Expression, our graphical pop-up for interactively executing JavaScript, which is also in the context, 
and lets you visually explore your data. Earlier we discussed frames that teleport you back to how things were earlier in the call stack. Switching frames also affects the console. For example, local variables disappear from our scope when we go to an earlier frame. The console also shows this. Here's one more useful debugging feature. Often you're interested in one particular variable or expression as you step through code. You can set up watches, which focus on the variable or expression. Let's create a new watch by clicking on the plus sign, then providing the variable name as the watch expression. As we step through, the watch value is updated. Perhaps, though, you want to keep track of a richer expression as you move through your code. For example, is the variable greater than a threshold? We edit the watch. This time, we provide an expression. The debugger then recalculates the watch value on each step. Removing watches is easy. Select the watch and click minus. Like breakpoints, watches are saved in your project and will be there after reopening the file or WebStorm itself. Finally, we mentioned at the beginning that these WebStorm debugger features work in Node's debugger as well as Chrome. Let's change to debugging in Node and see this breakpoint and watch in action. Same features, we stop at the breakpoint, we can see variable values, use the console, and step through our code in all the same ways shown earlier. In this screencast, we showed the productivity of debugging JavaScript and WebStorm, both with the browser engine and with Node.js. We saw console integration, different ways to use breakpoints, interactive use with the console and evaluate expression, the different kinds of stepping, and watches, all integrated into your IDE workflow. Thanks for watching this tour of JavaScript debugging in WebStorm.